Rejoice in the Lord, all you people, for the earth is full of God's steadfast love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. By the breath of the Lord, the stars were born. Let all the earth stand in awe of our God, for he spoke and all came to be. He commanded and all stood firm. Let us worship God. We just sang one of the oldest English language hymns. We're now going to sing a newish English language hymn, number 616, Our God is an Awesome God. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome into the presence of an awesome God, we begin to sense our own lack of awesomeness, the ways we fall short in being the people God calls us to be. So we come before God confessing our sins and humbling ourselves before the Holy Throne. Please join with me in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, believe the good news of the gospel. Our incredible, amazing, loving God sent his son to be on the earth with us to live with us, to feel with us, to love with us, to suffer with us, to die for us, to raise from the dead, defeating death and bringing us to new life, to interceding for us with God, by the grace of God. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sins, are forgiven. Thanks be to God. doldrums, revisiting the Apostles' Creed. I have heard those of you who are like, I didn't mess up the creed that day. I didn't. I know it. So do I. <laughs> just because you messed it up, Pastor. Just because that version that's in the bulletin is not what I learned 70 years ago. How many? <laughs> In your case, 53. 
Um, but it does give us a chance to revisit the basics of our faith. And today we're going to be looking at the um, first article of the creed and in theological thought um, speak. Each section of the creed is called an article. So you have the first article is I believe in God. The second article is I believe in Jesus Christ. The third article is I believe in the Holy Spirit. And the first article is I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, or creator of heaven and earth, depending on which version you learned. <laughs> um, and I want to actually introduce this by going back to a song that we just sung. Um, one of the places where the breadth and the expanse of God is um, expressed more than anywhere else is in the songs. And the song, Awesome God, is actually a modern song. It's just the verses of the song have gotten lost in the 40 years since the song was written. They've gotten lost because they are unsingable. Mm -hmm. Only one person can sing them, which is Rich Mullins, the guy who wrote the song. <laughs> Nobody else has ever managed to sing the verses. I am serious. You go on YouTube, you will figure this out. They're also not understandable, even when Rich Mullins <laughs> sings them, but they really express who God is and what the creed is saying. So I'm going to play Rich Mullins' original version of Awesome God for you. <laughs> Sees the angels putting on the ritz. It's thunder in his fists, it's lightning in his fists. And the Lord wasn't choking when he kicked him out of beat. And it wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close, and so you better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He The void of the night I spoke into the darkness and created the light and Judgments and wrath he poured out on Sodom Mercy and grace he gave us at the cross I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten That our God is an awesome God Our God is an awesome God He reigns from heaven above
play that with you because Rich Mullins in the verses captures what scripture claims as the foundation for the awesomeness of God. Both his um, ability as creator, his love, his power, his judgment, all these things actually kind of um, stand in tension with each other. And then there's one other aspect that scripture holds up um, regarding God, and it's found in what is the oldest statement of faith in the Judeo-Christian religion. And actually, it's in Islam, too, just slightly different words. And that is the statement of God's oneness. And it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, starting in verse 4. And this is known as the Shema. It is still recited as part of Jewish worship. Um, and it is underlying the Jewish sense of God. It's called the Shema because in Hebrew, the first word, which is here, is Shema. Therefore, it's called the Shema. Deuteronomy 6, chapter 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Who is God to you? Think on that as Mike plays. Originally, when I first began plotting this out, I was this Sunday going to focus on the oneness of God. That's something that I've been thinking a lot about recently and actually my spring Bible study, which is going to come around right after Easter, so late spring, is going to be on the oneness of God. Then I ran across this week an essay by Patty, Patty Kraywick. Patty Kraywick is 
Canadian. She's a writer, thinker, activist. She's Native American. She's a member of the Anishinaabe um, people. She's a Presbyterian and an active member of Niagara Falls Presbyterian Church. And she put forth a question that I couldn't get out of my mind in this essay. She goes to the story of Noah and the flood. And she asks, why didn't Noah argue back to God? Why didn't Noah do anything at all to try to save all the people, save the world, convince God that God was wrong, that God was bigger than God's proposed actions. And she asked this question because others in the Bible do just that. In the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, we remember God destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. What we don't remember is that Abraham argued for their salvation. In the story of Mount Sinai and the golden calf, God wanted to destroy the Israelites then and there, completely start over. But Moses argued with God. He told God that God was a God of love, a God who was committed to his people, a God who kept his word, who is bigger than wrath and destruction. And God relents. Isaiah even suggests that the flood was Noah's fault, calling the flood Noah's water. Patty Craywitt goes on to ask, are we sort of in the same place? Is our own vision and sense and faith in God not enough? Is our God too small, too limited? We're in the second of four weeks revisiting the 111 words of the Apostles' Creed. And we are at that point of looking at the first article. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. God, the Father. A God who loves deeply, like a parent, like a lover. Jesus calls God Father. We do too. An expression of the intimate relationship that they have. That is the God who walks with us, talks with us, calls us one of the his own. Isaiah fills his prophecies with maternal images of the divine. God gives birth. God is like a nursing mother. Throughout scripture, there's also a language of intimate love that describes God's relationship with God's people that describes Christ's relationship with the church. God is close. God is defined by love. And God is almighty. 
God, the Almighty God, has the power to destroy the earth. God has the power to save the earth. God has the power to shepherd individual people, and God has the power to make nations rise and fall. God is judge, jury, executioner. God is the ultimate in grace and mercy, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, remaining faithful in love to the thousands generation. The theologians didn't just make that up. God himself tells Moses that's who he is. God, the maker of heaven and earth. Everything comes from God. God shapes all creation. We, our lives, our very breath, our gifts from God. God made us. God made our world. God blessed it. God called it good. In her essay, Patty Craywick questions whether in our limited view of God, we begin to wonder whether God can actually achieve all that much. She looks at the history of religion, Christianity, as it comes to America. And Patty Craywick is as much European as she is Native American. So when she looks at history, it's her history as well. And she wonders how, if God was so almighty, and we worship such an almighty God, that history was one of such fear of other people, fear of the land in which um, we came and settled. Those early writings from our spiritual forebears, the Puritans, the Scotch-Irish Presbyterians talk about a godless land, an untamed land filled with godless people. And she says, but if God is almighty creator of heaven and earth, how can a place be godless? How can a people be godless. If God is almighty, we need not have fear. We don't need to fear the new or the different. We don't have to be afraid for our own lives. We don't have to be afraid of our enemies because if God is almighty, all are under God's power. If God is defined by the love of a parent, of a spouse, we can be confident of God's steadfast love and providence as we journey through our lives. Is our God too small? I've been thinking that a lot about myself recently that maybe I'm more Noah than Abraham or Moses or Jesus. I believe God loves me. But I often struggle to believe that God has the power or the capacity or the willingness to love anyone else. I believe God created heaven and earth but deep in my being, I believe that God created it just for me to do with as I will, even at the risk of my own destruction. And I don't think I really believe that God is almighty. I mean, I say it, I preach it, I teach it, I know I should believe it, but I don't 
live my life like I believe. I don't think most of us live our lives like we believe that God is almighty. If I believed in God almighty, I would worship the God of work or of productivity with life meaning, world salvation, even coming through the labors of my hand. Maybe if I believed in God Almighty, I could keep the Sabbath and make it holy. If I believed in God Almighty, I wouldn't worship the God of money, stressing about the source of my daily bread and my status in our consumeristic society. If I believed in God Almighty, Maybe I actually could give all my money to the poor, like Jesus tells us to, or at least tithe 10% to the church. If I believed in God Almighty, I wouldn't worship the gods of power and security, being fundamentally concerned about the safety of my family, the defense of our nation, the need for political control or power, the need to defend God. How ridiculous does that actually sound when you say it? But we hear that language a lot. We need to defend God. If God is almighty, I think God can probably take care of God's self. If I believe in God Almighty, maybe I could remember our Almighty God causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous alike. Maybe I could love my enemies, pray for those who oppose me, and trust my God to set out a banqueting table in the presence of my enemies. What would have happened if Noah had not just followed God, but really deeply known the love, grace, mercy, and power of a God who could just as easily save the world? as destroy the world. What would have happened had Noah pleaded with God to replace the energy of destruction with the energy of salvation? Certainly the story would have changed. Would Noah have demanded the salvation of others? Would the ark have become not just a place for the refugees of animals, but also a place for the refugees of humanity? Or would Noah, instead of building the ark, have crisscrossed the earth like a prehistoric Jonah, calling his neighbors, his neighbors who were created by God, loved by God, separated from God? to salvation. What would our own lives look like if we really believe in an almighty God, maker of heaven and earth? What would our church look like if we really believed and lived out faith in an almighty God maker of heaven and earth. Would we live differently? Would we love differently? Would we serve differently? Could we actually hear Jesus's words not to be afraid? Could we actually hear Jesus's words not to worry? 
if we believe in God and believe also in Christ, our hearts do not have to be troubled. Could we actually follow the commandments? Could we shed our burdens? Could we live lives defined in every moment by love? Could we actually seek first the kingdom of God? And in doing so, find ourselves and our community filled and overflowing with the promised life beyond all measure. Let's sing again. I'm going to come to hymn number 22. This is another newer hymn, but it, it captures the, the breath of God so amazingly well. God of the sparrow, God of the whip. Join with me as we affirm our faith, saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us enter into a time of prayer. Holy Lord, you are almighty. You created us. 
You created our neighbors. You created our enemies. You created this world which sustains us. And you filled it with your love and with your grace. We ask, Lord, that we might feel your power. Feel your healing presence. Feel the beauty that is around us. Feel how you have provided for our needs and will provide for our needs. We ask, Lord, that you free us from the fear that comes from not believing in your breadth, in your depth, in your love, in your providence, in your caregiving. We ask, Lord, that you free us from those fears which cause us to hurt our neighbors, which cause us to hoard your love and your salvation for ourselves, which causes us to abuse and hurt your creation at the expense of our own communities. Lord, we ask that you heal us, both from our fear and from the many places that hurt. Heal our bodies, Lord. Heal our souls. Help us to feel your divine presence. Lord, we ask that you be in this community as COVID continues to run us ragged up, down, and sideways. Be, Lord, with those who mourn. Be, Lord, with those who hurt. Be those. Be, Lord, with those who are filling hospital beds, those who are missing work those who are trying to figure out how to keep shifts going with too few people, those who are caring for us, those, Lord, who are afraid to go out lest they might be sick, those, Lord, who are afraid of what our society is becoming as we face this pandemic. Be, Lord, in the hurt, in the mourning, in the loss, in the fear. Pull us through this time, Lord. Bring us closer to you instead of further away. Help us find the avenues for love and hope and renewal. <coughs> and new life. Lord, we thank you for your abundant grace. We thank you for the church to guide us and nurture us and nurture our children. We thank you, Lord, for neighbors with snow blowers and ATV snow plows and young people with shovels. And we ask, Lord, that you send them our way. Put your blessing on us and on your church and on our country and on our world. And we ask, Lord, that you hear us as we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We end our service with our closing song. Go, my children, with my blessing.
Watch out on the sidewalk. Watch out for God in the snow, in your neighbor, in your own life. And as you go, go knowing that the love of God, the fellowship of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with you now and always.